engineering research since 1986. His research interests include human behavior and evacuation modeling, and fire dynamics, and fire modeling. Um, uh, his research group has developed the advanced fire and evacuation software tools Exodus and Smartfire. He is the author of over 150 academic and professional publications, and he's won a number of awards, uh, the list of which is too long to mention in this short two and a half hour session. So please welcome. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to present uh, some of the results from the, uh, the UK World Trade Center study. The study was uh, a joint study, three universities, Greenwich, Ulster and Liverpool. You see the names of the people involved there. Uh, the three principals from the three uh, universities are myself, uh, Professor Jim Shields, who's here in the audience in the front, and Professor David Cantor. Sometimes called the three wise men, but often called the three stooges. Um, you can imagine this was a very difficult project to undertake, uh, and uh, I don't want to underemphasize the difficult logistics involved in mounting this, a project as, uh, as large as this one uh, across the Atlantic. We had six of our research team, uh, one of which uh, Rachel Day is here uh, today, who conducted the interviews in the United States. This was extremely difficult for us to organize. Um, not least of all because of all the red tape we had to go through in the United States. We had to go through our own internal, our own ethics review here in the UK before we could get started. And then everyone that was going to lend us assistance in the States, we had to go through an IRB process, which was horrendous. Uh, and everyone who wanted to help us uh, always brought this thing up as a, as a, as a bit of a barrier. Uh, but we had to get over all of those things. We had to have, as I say, six people based in the States. We had our own health and safety care issues with our staff. Um, we had to have people come back to the UK uh, for rest. We had to try and organize the interviews. Uh, it was really very, very difficult. And we had to outreach the people. But um, one of the great things was that the people of New York, the good people of New York, really did help us. And the project would not have been possible uh, without the great support we had in New York from a whole range of uh, organizations. The New York uh, City Health Department were outstanding in their assistance to us. John Jay University were outstanding. Uh, a number of uh, organizations like the uh, High Rise um, uh, uh, Safety Group were uh, outstanding in terms of providing us with the political insight uh, as to the lay of the ground, the terrain in New York. Uh, and other organizations like the World Trade Center, the Survivor Network helped us as well. Uh, and the media in New York helped us. Uh, you really do need the media behind you if you're going to try and access all these people and have them um, uh, uh, come to us for interview. So that's, uh, that's some of the background. Uh, the project uh, was a three and a half year study, uh, 1.5 million pounds, uh, funded by the UK Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. And one of the things I want to say again from the outset is that if I've got one disappointment in the study was the fact that we could not achieve any level of collaboration on the ground with any of the other studies, and I think that's a great shame. Uh, I think all of our studies would have been greatly enriched if we pulled our resources together, both financial resources and person uh, resources, and, uh, and really tackle this as an international uh, research project. Uh, I, think, um, I think we need to look at how we do these things in the future, because I think it's a disservice to the people who died, it's a disservice to the people who were injured. We didn't do more cooperation uh, to try and understand what was going on. Um, the main accomplishments of our study uh, I think we're uh, doing um, the in-depth face-to-face interviews with almost 300 World Trade Center survivors. Um, this was a horrendous task, and I take my hats off to the six staff members we had who, uh, who undertook all those interviews. Um, one of the interesting things that uh, we found in this is that uh, people kept on saying to us, you're not going to get people to volunteer to do this. Well, actually, once they knew about the study, and once a few people had been interviewed by us, they were falling over to come and be interviewed. People wanted to be interviewed, and people did not feel that they couldn't talk about their experiences. In fact, we had difficulty in stopping people talking. Some of these interviews went on for three hours, and people just wanted to tell us about what they experienced. So, you know, people need to remember that in this field. They get tried to be put off 
by saying, oh, you're going to damage people, people don't want to talk. It, and, and in fact, one of the things that we found is that most people found it to be a cathartic process, actually telling us about what they experienced and wanting some, some good to come out of this terrible tragedy uh, actually encouraged people to talk to us. What we did was we developed an interactive online uh, relational database of evacuees' experiences based on the analysis of the interviews that we conducted. We have over 6,000 pages of transcripts of interview information that we, we gathered um, from this uh, study. So we've done some analysis of that and put it into an, a, a relational database which is available on the web. Basically there's a web address down there, you can gain access to all of our publications and you can also gain access to the uh, database through that link at the bottom of the page. Um, in addition to our analysis that went into the relational database, as I say, we also have the full transcripts. And we did this quite deliberately because while our team was very interested in trying to learn as much as we could, we knew that the audience out there, and it's not just here but around the world, will have different angles to look at this information, different strategies as to how to investigate it. So we've made this data one of the key things about our project, which differentiates us from all the other projects, is we've made our raw data available. No one else has done that. Uh, and, and so we have our raw data available for you to go in and investigate yourselves. Um, one of the things that we also were doing, we're still analysing the data, so the team at Greenwich, the team at Ulster, is still going through and analysing the data, we're not finished, uh, but you people are also welcome to start uh, looking at that data as well. We also did detailed computer simulation, analysis of the World Trade Centre, um, or WTC1 evacuation, we did a reconstruction of the evacuation to try and see if we could actually predict what happened, we've got a very good prediction of the overall evacuation time, but then we also looked at other issues. We started asking what if questions. So what if the building was fully occupied? What was the impact of the firefighters going up the stairs? We wanted to model that to see what impact that had because there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, the negative effects of the firefighters going up the stairs. We also wanted to ask questions such as what if one of the staircases had survived? Uh, could everyone above the impact floors who had survived, and WTC1 was almost a thousand people who lost their lives simply because there, were no, there was no way out. What if one of those staircases had survived? Could those people have got out as well? And so we were modeling that. And we also wanted to look at issues to do with merging on stairs, uh, deference behavior on stairs, and we wanted to look at um, issues such as what's the maximum height of building you can evacuate using stairs alone. And so all of this stuff is part of our World Trade Center study. Uh, and, and also, as I said, the uh, analysis of emerging behaviour on stairs. So there are papers covering all of this stuff on our website you can get all this information. I'm not going to have time to go through all of this. Well, what I want to uh, cover is some of the data which I think is going to be of interest to uh, engineering analysis that we've, uh, we've extracted from this study. And 